with that, let me turn it over to Kristen to lead us through today's Power Pack workshop. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, Roger. And he's right. I have never partnered with a company to help them uh, with an opportunity call. And I'm so excited to be doing that with you guys. And this is a really great segue for setting you up for the most success. I think the number one mistake I see network marketers, social sellers make when it comes to their opportunity calls is they announce the day of the meeting that the meeting is happening. And they assume everybody that everybody on their friends list will see them and show up that night. Well, we all know that not every single one of your friends is on the on your feed or on social media at the exact same time. People need a lot, like you feel repetitive. It's really important for you to get out of your head when you're posting on social media because you might think I'm being really repetitive. Great, because not everybody sees all your things all the time, okay? So if, even if you're like, I feel like I've said it already that there's, you know, an opportunity call next week to, to go to, like, you don't know who's seen it and who hasn't. So in order for you to have maximum exposure at this PBO, I want you to see the PBO as the ultimate conversion tool of all the conversations you are having, which means this week, I really want you to think about I want you to have a target in mind of how many people personally you are going to get to that PBO and be like, I am making a commitment to myself that I am going to get 10 people live on that call, at least 10 people live. If they say, I'll catch the replay, work really hard to be like, I totally understand if you're busy, um, I'll send you the replay. Or how about you and I connect at a better time? What's easier for you? Don't let them just disappear because that time doesn't work for them, but also respect their time enough to let them plan for it. Okay. I think when you just post on your feed and like, Hey, it's happening tonight. You're a, you're betting on somebody having no, no other plans. You guys, people are busy. What's the number one objection that people have to joining a business? I'm busy. So you have to, if you want to talk to busy people, which everyone's busy, you need to honor their time by saying, Hey, this next week at this time, this place message me, I'll get the details to you. Here's why you should be there. Here's why it's compelling. And we're going to talk about that today. I'm going to help you all of this week. I want you to think about, all right, I'm going to fill up the top of this funnel as much as possible so that I can get as many people who are interested to the PBO. And then I can convert them because there's something about the third party validation. You're not selling really when they hear and listen, all you've done is just set the tone and give them and just talked about all they need to have is desire and curiosity. That's it guys. You don't need to have like, all the science for them. You don't need to be talking about all the nitty gritty, gritty ingredients. All you need to do is get interest and curiosity and say, sounds like you're interested. Can you come at this time? Let me send you the info. And I want you to think of how you can thank them for their time. You are a business owner. So for me, I'm like, it may be out of your 10 people being like, Hey, my 10 people, just for coming, I'm going to give you a Starbucks gift card, or I'd like to send you a complimentary, you know, treat or a sample or something, incentivize them to be there so that they know this is worth their time. Okay. We want them live. All right. So the focus this week is, this is so good because now we're on week three, we're starting to compound. Okay. All these conversations, even if you feel they haven't yielded fruit yet, what you're getting is attention and what you're getting is more eyeballs on your content. We have to keep going back to that because a lot of times if we're too into, you know, the what's happening today, we're not looking back and being like, well, what's happened over the last 21 days that's compounding in my favor to get a certain number of people to the PBO. Does everybody understand how important your conversations are this week? Where if you wait to do the post next Tuesday, day of, don't come crying to me or anybody else that nobody came. Okay. Cause we have to understand if you're throwing a kid's birthday party, you got to tell, you got to give enough notice to the parents. No different. Okay. So someone, this is a great question. Someone just said, Kristen, should we invite using a graphic as well through conversations? I find graphics are best in your stories. Those are the things that go up for 24 hours. That's the best place on your grid, on your feed. It tends to read as spam to your audience or as an ad. 
We don't want to condition your audience to scroll through. Post a picture of your cute fur baby that causes a scroll. Be like, if you are a pet lover, I have like, there is something you cannot miss next Tuesday. Let me tell you about it. Okay. So keep your graphics to, uh, when you're doing your follow-ups and be like, Hey, we talked last week about this. I'm so excited to have you there. Here's the graphic I'm going to send you. So I want you to see the graphic as a follow-up tool or as a stories tool, but not on your feed because you are a human. You are not a catalog. People do not engage with catalogs. Does everybody understand that? Yes. Okay, cool. So knowing how important filling the top of the funnel is this uh, this week and really every single week, this is just part of your business operating, like this is your daily method of operations. Every day you're talking to people and you're writing posts on social media. I was looking through the, the posts and I noticed there's two areas where you have the most natural leverage that you're. I'm not seeing everybody treat as a non-negotiable. So where's your lowest hanging fruit? Someone asked a great question. So I want to answer this. They're like, well, what is the function of my stories? What do I put in my stories? Your stories. So you have your feed and then you have your stories where it shares for 20, it lasts for 24 hours. And I want you to see this as, by the way, your stories is the most powerful selling tool to have. Many of you kind of get in your head of like, posting or selling on your feed. And you're like, I don't want to look like a salesperson. The most organic place to sell that creates natural conversations is being in your stories. And I want you to make it a point of posting in your stories five to seven times a day. Now you might freak out at that. I'm going to tell you exactly what to post. You ready? Post your morning coffee. Good morning. What do you take in your coffee? Have a little question box. You're conditioning your audience to answer questions and talk to you. This is good. We want, the more we have people talking to you, the more they see your content, the more it opens the door for you to create curiosity for future business conversations, okay? Your morning coffee. I'm assuming everybody here has a pet. Every morning, you should show, you should be filming yourself feeding your pet. Every morning. It's just what you do. Be like, good morning, prop up your phone and say, good morning. I'm just here creating my, my, my food here for my sweet pup, Hank and Luna. Don't be afraid to talk about the ingredients and be like, I'm just going to sprinkle this over. Well, Luna has sore joints and this is so good for her. And I just, this is just something I love doing. You're not selling. All you're doing is just talking about what you're doing. That should feel natural for you. Again, people are coming to your stories. I want you to know this. People are coming to your stories because they want to know more about you. So let them in. They're coming into your house. They want to see what your life is all about. If you take your dog on a walk every day, I want you to just take a quick story of you with your dog being like, getting our steps today, going around the neighborhood, drop your playlist. What's your favorite thing? Engage, engage. Don't just do a story that says nothing. I want you to think about how can I invite people in to start conversation with every story I do, okay? You feed your pups twice a day, second time. At the end, your evening, be like, all right, second of the day, or ooh, we just got back from our, our time at the dog park, and look, I'm just gonna reward my sweet hanky for having great recall. Here's the treat. Oh, by the way, this treat is so great. Let me just show you the ingredient label here. Guys, it's not weird. It's so natural. I just want you to know that today's social media user is conditioned to product exposure in stories. They actually know that they're going to learn about products and things they can buy in your stories. So I want you to know they're expecting product exposure. Every single person should, should be really encouraged by that because I think some people are like, oh no, I'm selling. Oh no, I'm not being authentic, but it's just your life. It's just your life. And if you bought a new, I want you to think of other things too. If you like bought a new dog bed or you bought a new squeaky toy, share it. It's all, it all, you are just becoming somebody who just provides value and not in just one area. I don't care if you're like, hey, I'm trying this and this is why it's so important. I call this the bridge of trust. Let's say you share your morning coffee. Every morning you share your morning coffee. This should just be, okay, so everybody should have at least four bullet points in their stories every day. 
my morning coffee, feeding my, feeding my animals in the morning, feeding my animals in the evening, having conversations around it, my daily walks. We've got at least four here. Okay. Another one is just what is a product you're loving outside of pottery stuff. So you could be like, Hey, I'm doing my meal prep and I'm really into this dish. Like I keep making it three times a week. If you like it, here's the recipe. Here's the link to it. I want you to know what happens to your audience when they see that. Or let's say it's every day they catch your morning coffee and you're like, Hey, I take my morning coffee. I'm going to share mine. For example, I make mine with fair life milk, which has less carbs, way more protein, helps me feel better. I could talk about that. And someone could watch that and be like, oh, I'm going to look into fair life milk. And if they like it, guess what they see me as? They're like, well, I really like how she did her coffee. And now I drink my coffee differently because of how I follow Kristen. So of course, if, if I really like this, then why wouldn't I like this that she talks about? They automatically, this is the bridge, they automatically bridge their trust to you as soon as you help them in one area that you think is totally unrelated. You're like, all I did was share my Monday night meals. And they're like, I love my Monday night me meals thanks to you. And you know what? I keep watching every day. I keep watching you feed your dogs. And you talk about like you show your dog's beautiful shiny coat and that your dog is a senior dog and moves around so well. I have a senior dog. Okay. Like they, they start, they start to make that, to make that connection. And, and I just want you to notice that as I'm talking about this, do you see how organic and natural and fun this can feel? All you're doing is just living out loud. That's all you're doing. You're just inviting people into your day. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be curated because most people can't relate to fancy, pretty, and curated because they look around in their life. They're like, my life is a mess. I've got 10 loads of laundry. Heck, talk about your 10 loads of laundry. And they're like, oh, great. You're, you're just like me. In fact, I would say the more relatable you become, the more easy it is to talk about this business because if they see you as somebody that is perfectly put together, running a business, then they assume, well, you can run a business only because you're perfectly put together. I'm not. Look at my mess. But if they see your mess, they'll be like, cool, you can make money online while your life is chaotic. I can too. This is why transparency and letting people in is so important. All right. Um, give me a like, I'm talking a lot at you. I've given you four ideas to post in your stories every day. Give me two more bullet points, two more things that you do in your every day that you can put in and give people some ideas here. Two more things that you could do. Are you in the drop off? Someone does enrichment prep. G gardening. I love that. Get eggs from the chicken coop. Love it. Dinner grooming your pet. Oh gosh, I have this amazing like pet grooming vacuum. I could sell it all day. I love it. I should like, actually, I should probably share that. A book of the day. <laughs> someone said, I guess I need some routines or your lack of routine can be a part of who you are being like, Hey guys, it's a chaotic mess. Every time I'm here, here's what you can expect today. Just show up. Okay. Packing my dogs for a dog show. Okay. That's cool. I would love to see behind the scenes of that. Like, I think it's so interesting. So often we write off parts of our life thinking that's boring. Nobody would want to see that, but I'm like, Okay, I'm so curious about this dog show life. Tell me about it. I would like to, you guys, I love watching behind the scenes of things I would never do myself, okay? Puppy curriculum, riding my motorcycle self, -love. okay. Foodie picks, great. Messy desk, okay, you guys have your ideas. I've at least given you four. There are things you do every day that you can invite people into. I want you to also think with every post, you're to ask something that like engages, like, Morning coffee time, how do you take your coffee? There's a question box you can put up there and be like, how do you take your coffee? Or uh, feeding my pups, what brand do you use? Like, or just be like, what is something your pups need? How are you on a scale of one to 10? Guys, this is so good. On a scale of one to 10, how happy are you with your pet food? You don't, you're not even asking like, do you wanna buy? You're just asking, are you happy? 
here's how to know if you should be happy. Like here are 10 signs. Like, so on the first slide, you're making your thing. I mean, like, Hey guys, while I'm doing this, right on a scale of one to 10, just comment back to me how happy you are with your pet food. One being like, I'm so thrilled. 10 being like, I'm, I feel like I'm changing it every six months and I'm so annoyed. And then being like, hey, and you might actually, and then the next slide, I want you to hear this, guys. The next slide, the next story, you say, hey, you actually might not know that food is the problem. So I'm going to educate you on how to know if maybe the food is the problem. Here's a list of 10 symptoms in your dog that might point to it being a food problem. And here's why. So rate yourself again. And then every single person who responds, guess what you're doing? You're going to be of service to them and you're going to reach out and say, hey, Sarah, I saw that you commented that you weren't really happy with your dog food and that you had your pups were having a bunch of these symptoms. I'd love, I'd really love to help you. Do you have a, are you interested in learning more? I have a really simple solution. Don't be afraid to share your story and be like, you know what? Here's my story with my dogs. I'd love to share it with you. Do you have a couple minutes? Do you see how natural this is? Yeah. Is everybody getting tangible takeaways of how to sell and engage in their stories? Yes. I'm going to like, I'm going to go through, I'm going to like, look at everybody's faces on FaceTime. Give me a nod. Okay. 